Today, patients who receive the diagnosis of a cancer have particularly unique and difficult challenges. We have many causative factors that our population is subjected to in terms of the pollution, the EMFs, unchecked viruses, all kinds of other background illnesses that may contribute to our vulnerability as a, an organism and the vulnerability of our immune system. And because it's such a complex matter, it has now come to the point where many physicians and patients are realizing that the simple three-pronged approach to treating cancer is simply not enough. When we look at traditional treatments, we're, as patients, we're confronted with evaluating whether or not we can have a surgery and the cancer can be cut out. There are a lot of rules and restrictions, so if you don't meet the criteria for a surgery, you may then be recommended to have other treatments such as radiation therapy, which is basically causing a burn, and or very harsh chemotherapy to poison the cancer cells that are growing. Now, all of this is based on the presupposition that you can actually sterilize an area of tissue with radiation therapy, that cutting is going to possibly cure a person, and giving a person a lot of poison is going to kill all the cancer cells. So there's a lot of misconceptions based in that thinking. A big part of it has to do with the fact that cancer is a microscopic problem. It's a microscopic environmental set of issues. The microscopic threat to metastases that's always present, even when a tumor is only millimeters in size and you don't even know you haven't, is because there are circulating tumor cells and circulating stem cells that have uh, relative immortality. And so when you kind of stand back and think about it logically, how can you expect to quote unquote cure somebody if you're just cutting an area of a tumor, like in the breast, okay, or taking out a piece of the colon where the tumor is? Because if they're circulating tumor cells throughout the body, you're not going to get those with that modality. Cutting will not remove them. Radiation therapy is usually given in a local area, so that means that there's a focal point. Many times people have breast cancer, they'll have a, a minimal invasive surgery, and then they'll say, oh, we'll sterilize the area of the breast and the chest wall with radiation therapy, either in the operating room or postoperatively. Well, radiation therapy has its complications. If you have a left breast cancer and you get radiation therapy, unless you have special precautions taken, you may have damage to your lung and definitely damage to the left ventricle of your heart. And you're not really gonna sterilize the area because you haven't addressed circulating tumor cells with that modality. Then you come to the issue of chemotherapy, which is traditionally given in traditionally established doses. It's usually milligram per kilogram or milligrams per meter square. And they can be very, very high doses. Uh, there's a drug named 5-fluorouracil uh, that's commonly used for many illnesses, and especially in the case of uh, colon cancer, uh, an individual may have 4,500, 5,000 milligrams of this dose, this, this drug in a single dose. And all of these drugs are toxins. They don't just selectively kill cancer cells. The, the assumption is that because the cells are dividing rapidly, if we give a poison at a certain point in time, everybody that's dividing is going to die. And that's true, but there's many normal cells that are dividing, and they're going to die too. So the complications in terms of damage to your nerves, damage to your GI tract, and um, all of the other areas of the body where dividing cells exist, your bone marrow, these, these are all complications that occur when you rely only on like a high, heavy dose of poison. And as I said, it still doesn't address the issue of circulating tumor cells and stem cells that are residually present in the body and other areas and potentially represent the uh, possibility of creating a metastatic problem later on. And 
we, we look at even the concept of excessive killing at once. And there's another aspect to that is not really logical. People get cancer because their immune system is impaired. When you kill a lot of cells, somebody's got to clean it up. And the cleanup crew is the same group of cells, the immune system, that's already impaired. So when you give your immune system a huge burden, like five days and 28 or 30 of a lot of high dose po poison, okay, you're, you're, you're overburdening the immune system to the point where it's not gonna be successful. And some people succumb. There are many reports of people dying after the first dose of full dose chemotherapy or having permanent marrow, bone marrow suppression and low white count, low platelets, or neurotoxicity and problems walking and dizziness and ringing in their ears and all these things or peripheral neuropathy that never goes away. So people nowadays are under coming to understand that number one, a lot of these, the combinations of traditional treatments are, are toxic. And number two, they may not cure you, <laughs> even though the people like to present a lot of statistics, the problem is you can't compare one individual to the next. It's very difficult to reproduce all of these studies and many of them are, of course, conducted by drug companies. So it's, it's difficult to say, you know, <laughs> as a patient, and even as a physician, is it really worth it to subject the person to all of this and then turn around and not have a good result? So integrative oncology is trying to look at all of the aspects of the complexity of the development of the problem and then conversely the solution to the problem. So that means we have to look at the individual, what their predisposing factors were, and not just relying on the genomic theory of cancer because that doesn't play out either. We have environmental issues that cause genetic change, whether it's in our gut and we have poison in our gut from all these toxins that people use to kill weeds and fertilize the soil, or environmental toxins such as uh, electromagnetic frequencies, which is becoming increasingly a uh, huge threat to uh, people's health. And at the same time, we have, and we know because <laughs> COVID is here, um, viruses are real entities and they're powerful and they can negatively affect our immune system for a very long period of time. There's research that's more than a decade old to show that the prevalent Epstein-Barr virus or the mono can live in our bodies and over time cause genetic changes and participate by living inside macrophages in our bodies, participate in creating oncogenic or tumor promoting um, proteins, genes, developing new blood vessels, the whole gamut. So no, it's not just because it we're just because there's so many causes, we can't just say, oh, let's just use chemotherapy. Oh, let's cut it out. Oh, let's use radiation therapy. We're not gonna get a good result because we're not fully evaluating the problem and we're not fully solving the problem. So integrative oncology tries to bring together all of these aspects, even including emotional stressors and you know people who have cancer and they have recurrent cancer. They just recite all the terrible things that happened in their family or their lives, the people who died, all this you know, traumas. And every time they have one, their cancer comes back. Okay, that's got to tell you something. These are all parts of the functioning of our body. And so when we're trying to sort everything out and we're trying to help someone achieve healing and get on a path of wellness, we have to look at all of these aspects. We can't just poison them, cut it out, or burn it. It's not gonna, they're not going to be happy with the result. So nowadays, we like to try and evaluate everyone for all these categories of, of root causes, as it were, and see what does each person have that might be a contributory component to their illness, and then solve it. Because when you solve these underlying root causes, you will help ensure a great result long term.
I have many patients who come to me, they're just basically left for dead. They're told to go home and die. Go on hospice, and they don't want to die. Many of these people are young. They're diagnosed stage four, 19 years old. So, you know, we, we have to do something more to serve people than just hand out poisons and cut out tumors and, and, or burn them. It's just, it's not enough. It's, it's our duty to do more. So that's why I love integrative oncology. It really brings everything together. I, don't, I, I use traditional drugs in tiny amounts, and low-dose chemotherapy is something that's very, very effective. I use natural elements to boost the immune system and other repurposed drugs or immunotherapy, vaccines, you name it. There's many, many things that can be done and to use, be used effectively. So it's a matter of having a base knowledge of all of these techniques and then trying to thoroughly evaluate each individual to see what is it they need. And then how can we coordinate a plan of treatment that's synergistic and will sequentially treat the problems in a logical order of uh, priority. So that's the beauty of integrative oncology. We try to address the whole person, the whole problem, and many times achieve successes where no one else thought the person would even survive. So I think that's why you all as patients who are thinking about getting treatment should consider this. This is a very important thing to encompass the entire problem, not just a tiny part of it.